This is Dr. Richard Chmielewski. I'm an osteopathic physician in general medical practice in Utica, New York. This presentation is based on techniques for the treatment of upper and lower respiratory illnesses at an osteopathic conference in Las Vegas in October of 2008. A seminar on pandemic flu 1918-1919 focused on how the medical community and our government plans on reacting to an influenza pandemic. I became very interested when the lecture showed what happened in 1918 and 1919, how the medical system was inundated with thousands and millions of patients who eventually outstripped the resources of the time. Estimates are that 50 to 100 million people died worldwide from that influenza pandemic. If and when a similar pandemic strikes again, we may not have enough medication, enough hospital beds, or enough medical personnel to care for everyone. In 1919, there were cities that even had a casket shortage and buried the dead in mass graves. I learned a series of manual techniques, many of them used by the osteopathic physicians of the 1918-1919 pandemic during that Las Vegas conference. I felt that the public should be made aware of these techniques as a basis of knowledge of what happened in the past. I believe that these techniques should be looked into in more depth to see if there is any utility or validity in using them on patients. The techniques demonstrated here are not meant to supplant accepted modern medical diagnosis or treatment. This presentation is offered solely for its historical importance and hope that it will spur further interest in researching this and similar approaches to treatment of influenza and other upper and lower respiratory illnesses. Okay, so let's start with our techniques. I like to start first in the thoracic area. That's the central area of the pump for the entire circulation with the heart and the lungs. What I do is I turn the patient's uh, uh, head to the side on there so they don't cough on me. Uh, gently put my hands uh, on the upper ribs here. If it's a female, she will cup her breasts on there as I put my hands over the upper ribs. So what we'll do is I'm going to have uh, my friend here take slow deep breaths in then out. And I follow them as he exhales. I start at about two to three times a second. I pump up and down. As he inhales, I ease up a little bit, let him inhale. When he exhales, I follow it down with a little more pressure each time. He inhales, I let it go, and then I press a little bit harder and take a nice deep breath, and I let go. All right, I do that a couple of times. It's gonna go on these ribs here, and I'm gonna have a pumping motion, but it's gonna be kind of a pumping, kind of a circular motion a little bit, okay? Obviously make sure that the, uh, you want to make sure that the spleen is not enlarged. And what I'm going to do here is just gently just pump. I'm bringing my lower hand up and my upper hand I'm bringing down. In that squeezing motion, doing that about two times a second for about 45 seconds, again, in this introductory clip, I have attempted to offer you the rationale behind the influenza protocol used by osteopathic physicians during the 1918-19 influenza pandemic that so devastated the world. This influenza protocol has been used by me for the past year for various upper and lower respiratory illnesses, including influenza during the last flu season. I was very impressed with my ability to dramatically help my patients. I honestly feel that the influenza protocol, as outlined by me, is a series of techniques that can be easily mastered by anyone with basic knowledge of the techniques. I'm hoping that others will take on the challenge of researching the effectiveness of the influenza protocol. As I said in the introduction, this video of the influenza protocol is of historical interest only and is not meant to supplant current accepted treatments during an influenza epidemic, be it the H1N1 novel influenza pandemic or the seasonal flu. Hygiene, including frequent hand washing, coughing into a tissue or into the forearm and not the hand, not sharing bottles or cups or cigarettes, quarantining as necessary, possibly the wearing of masks or respirators, and vaccination and use of antivirals such as Tamiflu and Relenza, and hospitalization of critical cases are the standards of treatment. I wholeheartedly support this approach.